There's a reason why you feel like making friends as an adult is hard, so let me help you. The secret formula to making friends is not having a lot of charisma or being the most interesting person in the room or being able to do grand Instagrammable gestures. Sure, those things help, but relying on those traits alone is not what's going to earn you really solid friendships. Here's the truth. Despite our world of non-stop notifications, so many of us feel disconnected. Loneliness in a room full of people, on platforms full of followers, loneliness is an epidemic and the older you get the more acutely you feel it. That part makes sense. When you're an adult you're no longer vibing off just curiosity and carefree sentiments and you feel like it matters who your friends are. When you're an adult you're so self-conscious and so making friends with new people even maintaining current friends feel really hard. Some of us don't like being seen and so we really don't put ourselves out there and then there are some of us who really just don't want to open up. A larger number of us have learned to open up and it's actually resulted in some sort of heartbreak. And then we started to realize that maybe opening up no longer feels safe. Stick with me though, because I feel like I've got experiences that can really bridge that gap. Here's what I've learned about the secret, the formula, making and maintaining friends. I think it's actually really easy to make friends and it's really simple to maintain friendships. But just because it's simple doesn't mean that everyone's got the tools, right? Right? But that's why you're here. So here's what I've learned about the magnetism of authenticity, the essence of just genuine presence, the profoundness of empathy, mutual passions, and the game-changing potency of vulnerability that no one really talks about. So let's talk about it. So just imagine this. It's a throwback to high school and you're walking the school corridors and it's filled with a lot of laughter and jokes and banter and there's so much cafeteria drama and classroom clicks and I was not part of any of it. I was never the life of the party. I was barely invited to parties and I was always on the fringe just sort of looking in. I was just not with the it crowd. To be fair, I feel like other kids found me strange because I was strange. I just hadn't acquired the social cues or the the social awareness or the emotional regulation and I was just a really late bloomer. I was a really late bloomer. It made sense that I didn't fit in and so I stood out in the worst possible way. In my final years of high school I was relentlessly bullied and I found myself, I withdrew within myself and just constantly thought to myself how I disliked people, how much I disliked interacting, how much I hated socializing and how much I just hated being seen. I was so lonely but I started to prefer the solitude and the aloneness over having to deal with people at all. It really didn't help that innately I've always been very shy as a child I was really shy. The whole not being able to emotionally regulate made it really really difficult to deal with the emotions that came up. Fortunately high school ended and my life definitely did take a turn. Stay with the story because it really does get better. Fast forward 15 years and I really just sort of grew into myself and best of all I really cultivated and maintained a really amazing group of friends. Whenever I talk about my friends I cannot speak of them highly enough. Some of these people I've known for decades. Some of them I've acquired recently and never once have I felt like it was impossible to make friends. If anything, the older I got, the more I realized that opening myself up to experience new places, new people, quite literally participating in my own personal self-growth and actualization. And it's just not something that I could just bypass. If anything, I have more friends than I ever had when I was a child or a teenager. Everything good about me, I've learned from my friends. I've learned patience and compassion and kindness. And I would not be the person I am today if it weren't for the amazing friendship groups that I have. My friends are truly the best parts about me. My life fortunately got a lot better after high school. I am still very, very much introverted. But funnily enough, as life would have it. I currently work in a role that deals with a lot of people. That's literally 95% of my role. I deal with a lot of internal stakeholders and external clients and vendors. And the reason I think I'm part of an industry that deals predominantly with people is because I just learn so incredibly much about every single person I meet. Moreover, I learn more about myself when I'm interacting with them. And it is a privilege to be able to see who you are when you're dealing with people. 
because I truly don't believe that self-actualization can ever happen in a vacuum. You cannot understand and find yourself by yourself. All that's to say, I didn't easily come to those social skills. It didn't come naturally to me. And a lot of the times I had to learn. And the good news is success leaves clues. And I can hand to heart say that if I can do it, there is no reason why you can't do it. I still cringe every time I think about my high school experience. But the reason I'm telling you this story isn't to actually elude any pity from you. If anything, it actually touches on my very first point. Number one, the power of authenticity. To be authentic and truly you does require knowing who you are. And self-actualization is just truly a lifelong journey, I believe. It's not something that you just reach and never have to work on again. It's very difficult to be authentic in a world that constantly tells you who you should be, what you should wear, who you should hang out with, kind of jobs you should have, hair color you should have, brands you should associate with. In a world that constantly tells you who you should be, it's really, really difficult to confidently say who you are. The one thing I feel has been a constant in my coming of age story is that I definitely try to remain as true to myself as possible. But obviously, as you were growing up, there are different subcultures and cliques that you want to be a part of. And that's so important for you to experiment and try because the more you experiment and try to be different groups and try on different personas, the more you niche down to who it is that you truly are. When it comes to that path of authenticity and how it relates back to making friends, there is no other way to say it. And I don't care if it sounds woo-woo. People energetically know whether or not you're for real. And that energy, when you're truly who you want to be and you embrace who you truly are because you like who you are, that's magnetic. That trumps having the rears. That trumps being the most interesting person in the room. Because someone who's truly truly their most authentic self is the most interesting person in the room. It is so attractive when someone really turns up as their most authentic self and approaches life as their most authentic self. Because when you shine on your own, you ultimately give people subconsciously or consciously permission to shine on their own as well. Number two, to be wholly present. My favorite part about going to any parties not that I was invited to too many when I was younger. And it's always the DMs that I end up having away from the crowd. It's just in these very crystallized moments. These are the conversations where I feel like I am very much present. I am in the here and now. And it's just me and the person that I'm having a conversation with. I guess the issue is staying present in the now is such an underrated skill. And just a lot of people have essentially not cultivated. It. It's not a skill that people maintain, I believe. And it's just not something that people really value. But the thing is, people don't think that it's a massive skill set and it's not there. To be wholly present requires not just you being physically there, it requires your attention. It requires your uninterrupted focus, your time, your presence. This, I believe, is so pivotal when it comes to making friends and maintaining friendships because being present requires you to be a very skilled conversationalist. And being a good conversationalist requires you to be a very good active listener and I feel like I can do a whole video on what it means to be a good conversationalist to bring it back to how this helps you make friends being present is a skill that children are very good at they're not very good at holding their attention but they are very very good at just being in their moment children just have not developed that urgency that need to be somewhere else be doing something else when they're playing they are fully within that moment there is no other moment before that moment and there is no other moment after that moment. To be fully present is to not just be waiting for your turn to talk, to not be waiting for that gap in the conversation where then you can contribute. To be fully present is to not worry about the next moment, to not worry about where you need to be, that knowing that this is where you need to be right here, right now. I personally believe that it's such a masterful skill to constantly work towards. If you're the type of person who's really into mindfulness, this might come a lot easier to you. To not have to rush to the next moment, but to stay fully present in this moment is very indicative of just how mindful you are as a person. I feel like it's definitely a very difficult skill to master, especially in a culture that is constantly rewarding people who are seemingly rushing to the next project, rushing to the next productivity hack, trying to optimize their time as best as possible. 
And I totally get that. I'm very much into personal development and I really want to be making my time as efficient as possible. But when it comes to my friendships, my presence is a present. My presence is the gift that I'm giving and the value that I provide. If you are at all interested on how I sort of came to this mindset, I cannot recommend the book by Eckhart Tolle. His name, I think I just completely butchered. The book, The Power of Now, it's the first book that I've ever read that really gave me a good understanding of what it means to be in the now. There's just so much value in having honed this skill set because I asked you to think back to the last time that you've had a truly memorable good conversation because I bet that one of the best conversations you've ever had was unforgettable not because you necessarily remember what you talked about but because you remember how it made you feel you would have felt very listened to you would have felt like this person that you were having the conversation with truly cared about what it was that you were saying and ideally vice versa the way you so fondly think back to those conversations is how you want other other people to be feeling when you leave the conversation. When people think of you fondly, that's the basis of what I believe a good friend is. To be honest, it's, it's almost the bare minimum, but the basis of a good friend is someone who is there and not just physically there for you, but really present. It is so easy to be a good friend when your friend's lives are going really well, when they just got engaged, when they've just got a promotion, when they've just bought a house, when they're reaching all these really amazing milestones. And it's very easy to be very happy for them and I hope you are really happy I hope you are even happier than they are because I feel like that's indicative of being a good friend what actually is really important when it comes to empathy is how empathetic you are when things are not going well for your friends and just putting aside really tragic life events like sickness or death I'm just touching on the ebbs and flows of life for example if your friend was going through a breakup if your friend missed out on a promotion they were after if they didn't get the pay rise that they wanted if they're having some financial issues the crisis of living it's so expensive empathy i believe is the crux that holds a friendship together when your friend's world is falling apart of course having healthy empathy requires you to have healthy boundaries as well because you do not want to be internalizing any of your friend's grief or sadness or anger it's more from a standpoint of being able to look at them with a lot of love with a lot of understanding also being able to separate yourself from what is happening in their lives I know that my best friends are master practitioners of empathy because they know what it means to really sit with someone and really feel for them without taking on those emotions as well empathy is definitely a very interesting value and I wish I could elaborate on it a little bit more but this video is already getting a little bit long so I will finish that aspect up with saying that having empathy does not mean that you feel too much it means that you just have a big heart and I never want anyone to walk away from this conversation thinking that empathy is a weakness it is quite possibly the biggest superpower you can have outside of just being such a great value to making friends it is one of the best things you can do for yourself because like I said when things are going well it's very very easy to be happy for people for yourself it is when things are not going well that having the empathy and the grace to accept it for what it is but also consider that the emotions attached are all valid for mutual passions i am a strong believer that you should not collect friends to fit your aesthetic <laughs> That's a trap I feel like people fall into when they're in high school, but it seems like it could be a trap that people fall into as they get older as well. In high school, there's just not a lot of options, right? You sort of join other cliques and other groups because they make the most sense to you because they are similar to you. However, I can genuinely say that none of my friends are like me. The reason that we're friends is because we share all these qualities that bring us together. In high school, you're pretty limited by the kind of friendship groups that you can be associated with. Fortunately, in adulthood and in today's age, you don't even need to be physically living in the same country to be friends. What is really important when it comes to cultivating friendships and maintaining friendships is having a shared interest, a shared mutual passion. What I found to be really helpful is is that having different hobbies, having different passions really does bring people together. And if you're looking to make new friends, you can always join hobbyist groups or groups like dance groups and bouldering groups and pottery classes. I think if you're, if you really enjoy 
these types of activities, you'll always find people who are really open to making friends. And already you have something in common. You're literally at the class. I think participating in these little small pockets of hobbies and passions is a really, really great way to make friends. And if you're at all interested, I have another video I plan to make about how I met a lot of new people and made a lot of new friends, all the things I did and just really put myself out there. Making friends requires having a shared passion. So I'm not saying that you have to be completely alike but if you have something in common it's a lot easier to grow together and then finally number five vulnerability I feel like vulnerability does tie in a lot with authenticity and turning up as your truest self but I feel like it's such an important value that it sort of deserves a section on its own there are just so many people and you may be able to identify with this who find it really difficult to be vulnerable whether that's just because it's not something that you grew up with it's not something that was fostered when your family or or if it was something that you were open to and it sort of backfired and you were really burned by it. What I'm getting at is as an adult, it becomes harder and harder to be vulnerable, especially if it's to new people or people that you just don't have that relationship with. However, let me tell you something. To have fundamentally fulfilling friendship requires a certain degree of vulnerability. And the depth to which you are vulnerable is dependent on, on how safe other people make you feel. And out of all the things that I've talked about, but I truly hope for you is that you have a group of people or even just one person where being vulnerable does not feel heavy or unsafe or hard and I hope that you yourself is that safe space for someone to be vulnerable with. Again I do want to circle back into having boundaries with things like empathy and vulnerability. It's so much more important to have healthy boundaries than it is to just jump straight in. Make sure it's safe for you to be vulnerable with people. Make sure that the people you choose to be vulnerable with are safe, are an anchor for you and make sure that when you put yourself in a position where you are vulnerable that you can self-regulate that you can bring yourself back to a stable foundation. I am obviously not a therapist, so do apply this to areas in your life that make sense. However, I truly believe that to cultivate friendships as an adult, vulnerability is non-negotiable. You can only have so many surface level conversations before that well dries up. A lot of these skills are so fundamental in the way that we go about making friends and maintaining friendships but if not for anything else these are valuable skills to have for yourself you know as wild and as unpredictable as life is it's those genuinely real friendships and connections that anchor us the journey to profound friendships as an adult isn't about collecting people that fit your aesthetic or your perfect ideal life it's actually in those micro moments someone you know you can text because you saw a really cute dog or turning up to brunch and a group of people saving you a seat because they know you love sitting near the window making friends as an adult is not hard it does require you turning up as your most authentic self and thus subconsciously inviting others to do the same. It's about embracing being fully in the moment and recognizing what a true gift it is when someone reciprocates. It's empathizing with your friends in both their wins and their losses. And finally, that vulnerability is the path to intimacy, the path to a deeper connection that transcends the front that we put on. It's being a safe space for people to open up to you. Making friends as an adult is about honoring your essence and finding people who resonate with that. Because it's in these connections that you learn the most about yourself and find pieces of yourself that you didn't even know existed. We were not made to go through life on our own. We learn more about ourselves within community because the self is not actualized in a vacuum. So as you navigate through the vast sea of human interactions, just remember to be your most authentic self. And most of all, to actually make friends as an adult requires you to first and foremost be a good friend yourself. All these skills are what truly makes you magnetic. And I hope that the right people find you. And when they do, I hope you keep the right ones around. Thanks so much for joining me today. I have a lot of other videos coming up and I really can't wait to share with you. I'll talk to you soon.